Now your goal as a writer is to give general but informative definition. You don't want to overdo it. Just give what's required. But the definition should be specific enough to suit the needs of your audience. There are several types of definitions. The easiest one and the one that I like to see in your papers is parenthetical. That is, just as it sounds, it is you putting the definition in parentheses behind the term. The first example given here, the viscosity, thickness of the material makes it difficult to pour. It took up very little space to explain what viscosity means, and it is a clarifying term. Maybe the person thought they knew what it meant but weren't sure, so by placing thickness in parentheses behind it, you have clarified this definition without taking up a lot of space in order to do it. It's a simple way to define something. The next example, fire team members must doff, remove, their supplied air gear before leaving the cordon roped off area. Again, it was simple to put definitions inside of parentheses following the word that may need clarification. It also has a tendency to not make your audience feel like they're dumb. It's a great way to just clarify and it's almost like reinforcing the fact that they do know what these terms mean but you're going to help them out with this. So I like parenthetical definitions and they are going to work really well in your papers moving forward. Sentence definitions are a little different. They take a specific form. The form is the term a verb, the larger class, and then the distinguishing features. One example of this is a prune. A prune is, there's your verb, a plum, that's the larger class. A prune is a subclass of the larger class plum. So a prune is a plum that has been dried and preserved. That last little bit explains what makes the prune slash plum different than other kinds of plums. Well, if it hasn't been dried and preserved, it cannot be called a prune. Another example is the internet is a global system of network computers that allows communication and the transfer of data between them. One more example, this one comes from my job place. A preventive maintenance plan is a maintenance plan that is scheduled before repairs are required to inspect, maintain, and ensure equipment runs well and its operating life is maximized. So I think you get how this works. A sentence definition, again, is just one sentence that defines the one term. There is a whole subset. It's kind of the third category of definition, which is called expanded. And we won't do much of that in this class, but it is an important thing for you to understand the details of. So we are going to go through it. A paragraph. This could be a page. It can even be a complete document that provides a detailed and intricate definition of something. One kind of expanded definition is etymological. And this is a definition that refers to the roots of a word. Or in other words, it answers the question, how did its name originate? An example of this is the one shown below. Technology is an English term derived from the words technicos, Greek, technicus, Latin, and technique, French. All three of these words refer to a particular art, skill, or science. So when you talk about where the words came from, that helps with the understanding of what the word means. Another type of expanded definition is historical. This is an explanation of where the term came from, or where it originated, where the circumstances that it was first used. So the questions you're answering here when you think about doing this kind of definition is what is its history? Where did it come from? The example we have is iron, is a metallic element that rusts readily in moist air. 
The first people who extracted iron ore were the Egyptians. They began extracting the ore as early as 3500 BC, but their technique was rudimentary. It looks like this would go on to describe more about iron and its manufacturer, whatever documents it, it's in. But it starts by giving you a history, so you have something to reference. And from the history, you can figure out, oh, this is something that comes out of the ground. It is a metallic element, and it rusts. So all helpful pieces of the definition of iron Another type of expanded definition is negation. Sometimes you can best describe something by describing what it is not. So what does it not mean? The example here is cast iron fiber is a new substance designed to reinforce concrete and mortar. It's manufactured from non-crystalline metallic strips known as fiberlex. It is not heavy and is easy to bend. It is not as thin as a piece of thread or rope, and it is not fibrous. So we are defining the material by saying the things that it's not. So again, this is a uh, negation, talking about what something is not to help define what it is. The next example of an expanded definition is operational. This is a definition that describes how something operates, or how does it work. Here the example is fluidics, is the application of flowing substances such as liquids and gases to system control and logic operations. They are similar to the flow of electrical current, but instead of voltages that drive electrons, fluidics involves pressure differences that drive fluid flow. So here we did a comparison a bit, but we also talked about what's happening Fluidics is using pressure differences to drive fluid flow, you know, fluid as in liquids or gases, in order to control and serve logic operations. So it's a way to talk about how something works in order to define what it is. This example is a real favorite because it's often easiest to think of whenever you have two objects that you can compare and contrast. So this is a discussion of a term as measured against something similar that also has differences. Similar is the compare and the differences is the contrast. And the question you will ask is how does it resemble or differ from something else? And this is often represented with a Venn chart. A Venn chart is where you take, typically it's just two circles, and overlap them. And so you show things outside of the circles that are different, but show things inside the overlap that is the same. So here the definition is, Oranges are similar to apples in that they are round fruits that grow on trees and provide healthy juices. They are different, however, and that they require tropical conditions to grow, whereas apples require moderate to subtropical. They have a thick outer peel, as opposed to the thick outer skin of an apple, and they originated in India while apples came from Turkey. So compare and contrast, uh, both used in the same place in order to help define something. We also have expanded definitions that are examples. Sometimes you just have to use an example of where it's used or how it's applied to something. Glass is a hard, brittle, and transparent or translucent material that has widespread practical, technological, and decorative usage in, for example, window panes, tableware, and optioelectronics. Once again, you use some examples to explain what glass is or to define the meaning of glass. There are others. There are parts analysis. When you talk about what are the parts of, a, of an object, uh, this is really helpful in technological items. Sometimes visuals are really, really helpful. What does it look like? Even if you're not providing a photograph or a clip art or an image like that, you can talk about how something looks. And then another kind of a expanded definition category is requirements. It's like, what do you have to have in order for this to work? Sometimes that's a great way to get to the definition of a particular word.
All right, we're going to leave off this topic with some guidelines for clear and precise definitions. Let's start at the top. You're going to decide on the level of detail. And what is it that helps you make this decision? It's you putting yourself in the place of your audience. You have to think about what level of detail is applicable or appropriate for them. The next one, you want to classify the item precisely. And you remember back when we were doing a prune is a plum, you have to be very careful about that. You have to be careful uh, to use those in the right direction, for instance. You should never say something like a dog is a hound. Well, that's not true. All hounds are dogs, but not all dogs are hound. Switch it around. A hound is a dog then you can go on with your definition, your sentence definition. So be sure that you take care to be careful with your classifications. You want to differentiate the item accurately. It's just whenever you point out the differences between it and another thing, be accurate about that stuff. The fourth bullet, avoid circular definitions, is a tough one. Sometimes it's very difficult to try to define something it just comes naturally to use the word itself in the definition, but you can't do that. That's a circular definition. The next bullet says expand your definition selectively. In other words, don't define every single item to the fullest extent. Pick and choose what needs the stronger definitions and which ones need no definition at all because your audience should be knowledgeable about that and which ones maybe need a short parenthetical definition. Be careful about what you expand on. Uh, the next item, use visuals to clarify your meaning. This is not always possible, but when it is, like when you do your final project in this class, you do want to use that. That is very helpful. The next one, know how much is enough. That's just the, you know, just don't overdo it. Uh, know when you've said enough. Know when to stop. And then the next two, consider the legal implications and the ethical implications. We talked about those early in this slide deck. So you just want to think about, especially when you're representing a company, you want to think that the words you put on paper can come back to haunt you. So make sure that they are legally and ethically correct before you put them out there. And finally, place your definition in an appropriate location. In other words, don't wait till the end of the paper to define something that is used throughout the paper. If it's used early in the paper, then it needs to be defined early in the paper. So be very careful about this. If you're going to put a definition and use it throughout the document, the first time you use it, put the, the definition that goes with the term. Okay, that's all we have for definitions, and you should be moving on to the second half of this class, which is technical instructions. See you next time.